Hey, it's Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co., and it's time for another two back or not to back. We skipped last week. There were um, not enough Kickstarters to do a full video on, but we have a bunch this week, and next week is only going to get worse. As usual, there'll be timestamps down below. We're going to be starting with a giveaway picking of the winner. Words are beautiful. I use them. But yeah, we're picking a winner for a giveaway of some miniatures from Wild Ascent or from Storm Sunder, I think. from Actually, from Storm Sunder. Either way, I'll get to that in a second. I will hopefully actually remember to timestamp and tell you my picks of the week this week uh, in terms of value pick of the week and personal pick of the week. Hopefully I'll remember. I have not been doing well there. And with that, let's go ahead and jump on into it. There's going to be a few things. Let's start with the giveaway. So over here on this video, this Wild Ascent Levon Rising Storm Sunder Minis, I went ahead and unboxed a whole bunch of Wild Ascent Levon Rising. I also went ahead and unboxed a bunch of, together in that video I showed you some Storm Sunder uh, final copy PVCs, both Storm Brushed and not Storm Brushed. And in that, you know, anyone who posted the Ward Shatter, because the dragon shattered its wings, uh, will had had the chance to be eligible to win a bunch of miniatures to test, play test, paint, whatever it is. So I went overhead and I posted the URL over here in YouTube Comment Picker. I put the word shatter, duplicate, filtered for duplicate users, got the comments. Only 144 comments actually used the word shatter. So high chances to win, 1 in 144. And we're going to go ahead and go through this. And it is... Joker M77, this video has shattered my expectations. Great job, Joker M77. I'll try to reply to your comment. You please make sure to reach out to me. My email's in the description of every single video. And with that, we're going to go ahead and start us off with the three campaigns that are not currently funding. We have three not funding, and then we just have a whole bunch of campaigns. There's nothing board game adjacent this week, just lots of Kickstarter campaigns. And no game found campaigns. No game found campaigns this week. Oh, interesting. They're going to start coming, but we're safe this week. Next week, we're not safe at all. So, starting off the bat, we have Arcosa. Arcosa is going to be a tableau builder. We're trying to deal with uh, surviving a colony on Mars or somewhere. I don't know where it actually is. It's on an unforgiving alien planet. You're going to have to deal with heavy decisions such as getting rid of people from your encampment because you don't have to feed them if you don't have them in your settlement. So, that seems like a reasonable choice to make. I vote we kill them all unless they are actually feeding themselves, in which case that's great. We can keep the ones that feed themselves. But yeah, Arcosa is going to be a game. This one's currently struggling. It launched... Let's see. When did it launch? It launched... Let's see where it is. It launched June 22nd, so five days in, and we're not yet halfway funded. We're barely, not even a third funded. That does make it unlikely that it will fund. I wish them the best of luck. Keep it on your radar. At the very least, pay attention, because they, if they do relaunch, then by backing this now, like putting in a dollar, you'll get a cancellation, but you'll get updates if or when it relaunches. That's going to be Arcosa. Then we have Rochambeau, the rock, paper, scissors board game, which is a fascinating thing already. I've seen stuff like, I've seen this before. I don't know if it's on Kickstarter or canceled or not. This is too created. I could probably click through, but I don't know if it actually matters. But Rochambeau currently is not funding. And again, we were a few days in and it's just, it's not currently funding, unfortunately. Uh, it may fund. This one's closer. It's past the halfway mark, so we'll see how it goes. This looks like rock, paper, scissors, the board game. It's basically going to be, you're going to have a board over here. You're going to have your various rock, paper, scissors hands. Rock beats paper, paper beats scissors, all that stuff. But along the way, you have these artifacts, and you're going to be trying to get these cards on the board, and you're going to have a choice of two cards, passive uh, ongoing cards, and then immediate use cards. And you're going to use those cards to basically, you're going to grab, grab two cards, give one to your opponent, keep one for yourself, and then try to use the combination of rock, paper, scissors, the tactical gameplay of the game, plus the cards and abilities to ultimately defeat your opponent. So a little rock, paper, scissors, a little powers and abilities, and a little abstract gameplay. Very interesting combination. I'm intrigued, not sold, but I'm certainly intrigued by the concept itself. From there, we're going to be moving on to Chroma. Chroma for making games, which is currently not funding. This is a challenging one. This falls into a weird space in that... The typical board game Kickstarter audience of, and I say typical in a potentially narrow-minded way, sometimes I project myself and who I think the larger audience is in a way that may not be accurate, but the typical board game uh, space that I'm used to on Kickstarter, this comes across as more of a gimmick. It comes across as a mass market game. This is from Breaking Games. Breaking ma Games makes a bunch of games, some of which are going to be a little heavier, some lighter, but they all feel like they fit more in the designer board game space. This one, on the other hand, feels like it's a mass market game. It feels like the kind of thing you're going to see at Walmart, at Target, which could be a good strategy. Those things can do well. I mean, to keep in mind, Codenames is going to be one of the best-selling designer board games of all time because it it crossed over into the, the non-designer board game space. So you can pick up a lot of audience, a lot of buzz, a lot of hype. That said... At the end of the day, this Kickstarter is currently not yet funding. $33,000 out of $115,000. It's doing well. $33,000 is nothing to sneeze at. But I do not see this funding, not at the current pledges versus price. I, I think that's just way too high a, 
a gap to cross. And this is an interesting game. The game itself involves basically having a backlit board that you'll then be placing tiles onto and the backlit co combined with the various color patterns will create colors. So it's a little bit of a color manipulation, a little bit of tactical blocking. Looks like an interesting puzzle to be played, but does feel a little mass market. Also, I'd love to see the video show them playing it all in a dark room. I'd love to see if this works in a light room because I'm a little wondering, does it work if you're not like turning off all the lights? So I'm intrigued, but I don't see this, this Kickstarter currently funding. I think we're due for a relaunch on this down the road. From there, speaking of relaunches, we have Cyber Odyssey. Cyber Odyssey is going to be the relaunch, the relaunch from, I think, Red... What is it again? It's from uh, Red Joker. The Red Joker, they relaunched Cyber Odyssey. This, the previous campaign had a bit of a false start with pledge levels in French and all those things. And this one, they lowered some of the prices as well. Not by a large amount, but they lowered some prices. And they relaunched the campaign. Cleaner, smoother start. And it's paying off because with three days to go, we are still... Where they're, they're over the original funding amount by a decent chunk. So they're doing much better the second time around. Good for them. Uh, this is going to be a game where you have a bunch of agents. You're sending around the board. You're upgrading the agents, developing their skills, to sending them on missions. I don't know a ton about the gameplay past that very abstract overview I just gave you. I do recommend checking out King of Average for a review of the game if you want that. In general, the Red Joker's games are going to fall into a category of being very large games that have a lot of components, have a lot of content, and are potentially worth it, but also going for a very limited audience. That's why their games have generally done okay on the second-hand market. They have not done particularly well. They have not been done particularly poorly. You usually lose a little bit, but not a ton. In this case, with the lowered pricing, it might help a bit, but I still think this is fairly expensive with a fairly niche audience that is going to make this a hard sell in the second-hand market. It might be your best opportunity to get this because with 500 backers, there's not going to be a large second-hand market, and the retail presence for their games generally is on the low end so it's not that this is necessarily a good back but maybe your best opportunity to get this game that's going to be cyber odyssey from there we have power rangers heroes of the grid rangers united this is a straight up bad back but a game that is a good game so power rangers heroes of the grid is a game that has had kickstarter after kickstarter tons of content and with all the potential power rangers out there not that i've really watched power rangers i watched the occasional episode i remember as a kid, I'd go to my grandmother like every like, I don't know, once every three months and we'd have grilled cheese and orange juice while sitting and watching Saturday morning cartoons. This was particularly meaningful to me because we didn't really grow up with a TV. We didn't watch TV. We watched movies, but we never watched TV. That's why if, if you watched my like, you know, video where I would cover what we backed and I was surprised my wife watched all the X-Men stuff growing up. I never watched X-Men growing up. I never watched standard cartoons growing up. My exposure was every three months I'd go to my grandmother's house and just spend the whole Sunday there having Pringles from a can, having, you know, grilled cheese and orange juice, and then watching, catching up on whatever Saturday morning cartoons there there were. Although not Saturday morning, because, you know, religious and Saturday and all that. But we just watch cartoons. So that's the few times I ever watched Power Rangers in my life. My kids have watched Power Rangers, because now we have Netflix and other things, and you don't need TV. And this is a fun little diversion. I enjoy this. I have fond memories of my grandmother. But, Yeah. Anyways, Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid. Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid is going to be a game that, well, it's a cooperative game that is, it's not one that appealed to me initially, but it's one that the ratings, the reviews of it are overall very positive, and they have a ton of content because, like I said, there's a ton of Power Rangers out there, a ton of ways to augment and develop the game. Uh, I don't know what you need or don't need in terms of expanding things. I am somebody who, if I like something, I get everything for it. I actually have Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid. I just haven't played it yet. I need to play it. I've heard good things. It's right there over there. I want to play it. Anyways, this is going to be overpriced content for the game. What do I mean by overpriced content for the game? You're going to have a bunch of expansion packs. You're going to have for $65, you get the Heroes of the Ranger United expansion. And then for $40 for each of these packs, you have Dino Thunder, Ranger Allies, and Villain Pack 4. Uh, that's going to be all these pledge levels here where you can spend $40 and then get one of those, although it's $25 extra if you choose to get this one over here. Keep in mind, there's a mistake in the all-in pledge. The all-in pledge is $185 because it takes into account that $25 extra, but it says it'll be an extra $25 anyways. That's a mistake. The all-in over here is going to be $185. And then that's not only really all in, that's for all the new stuff over there. And then we have a new starter power, a new to the party starter bundle if you want the base game as well. Uh, overall, the price, the content here is just overpriced. That's $40 is the MSRP. $40 is the price to pay to get this game at miniature market, and you're not getting free shipping either. So effectively, let's pretend you wanted one pack over here. Let's pretend you wanted this pack over here, the Dino Thunder pack. You'd be paying $40 plus shipping to get it. Or you can wait till it's at miniature market or whatever online game store and it'll be $33 with free shipping as long as you get a $100 order. So there's a big gap here. It's not worth getting this stuff in my opinion. I just lost my die. Give me a second to grab another die because I like fiddling with stuff. I'll grab a coin. I got a coin to fiddle with. 
So, uh, yeah, you're basically paying a little too much for the content, in my opinion. You do get promos with this. So you could have, you know, a set of dice or the Green, the green Ranger or some promo cards. So if you really want those promo cards, you're overpaying for it. But if you really want some of this promo content, it might be the way to go. And if you go all in, you get some Kickstarter exclusive boxes if you value that. I think you're overpaying for what you're getting over here. I'm not saying don't get the content. I'm saying the content so far until now has made its way to retail where you can buy those packs for cheaper. So up to you, I just think it's overpriced in that sense. From there, we have Six Siege the board game. I did a full show you back it on this one, Six Siege the board game. Short version is, I still don't have enough information, although we have more information. So, short version, for those who don't know, is Six Siege is going to be a tactical one-to-one -one skirmish game. It does have a four-player mode, but it seems to be designed, I mean, even over here, they say it's a one-on-one -on -one shooter, okay? So even they call it a one-on-one -on -one shooter, even though there's a four-player mode, I think it is a one-on-one -on -one game. I have gameplay and a review with Quackalo, so review on my channel, gameplay on his. He has another gameplay with Jan, Jesse and Jan playing the game. This is a solid game. I genuinely really enjoy this game. It is one of the better skirmish games I have played. Check out King of Averages review, check out our review. I don't know who else covered it. It might be in the Kickstarter. I mean, I know there's other channels, I'm saying. I don't know. I always have a harder time with the international channels versus the domestic channels. I know the US channels. I, I don't know as well. Well, some of the like the French channels out there, just the names or the, the audiences. But overall, Six Siege is basically giving you a, let me see what we have over here, Six Siege, the short version of the, aside from the fact that the game is a good game, the short version of the Should You Back It video I did was that Mythic is kind of branching out from their usual style of handling a Kickstarter. They're doing more like Super Fantasy Brawl than like, I don't know, Darkest Dungeon in the sense that you don't have a ton of exclusive, you don't have a ton of stretch goals, a ton of unlocks for this game. Rather, they have a very fixed offering with specific extras they are giving and also in terms of daily unlocks where they're giving you alt sculpts, alt extras, we'll cover some of those as well and the price point though as you might expect the price point on kickstarter is more than it will be if it makes its way to retail so we have michael king crackle king of ravage board game co it looks like that's those are the primary uh, english channels although hunter and friends i don't know for sure but yeah, that's going to be what the game is giving you. So it's giving you a, a core offering, a decent price, but not a great price. So the question is going to be a twofold. One, will it make its way to retail? Because not all Mythic Games offerings have. And two, what is the what are the extras worth? And is it worth that extra price point? To answer those ones, it sounds like they're going to retail here. Not all Mythic Games games have gone to retail. But it does look like this is being structured to go to retail. It's not going to be going to a typical retail distribution. So I know from various uh, retailer posts that they aren't like going in a typical distribution model it seems like retailers may have to buy it directly from them which cuts out a level of margins but also means that it's going to show up in less stores just by default so it's unlikely to have based on there's no facts here just to be very clear there's there's speculation and some degrees of information uh, it, i believe this will be making its way to retail but i believe it'll be doing so with a lower retail offering than you typically might expect because they are cutting out the distributor or it seems like they're cutting out the distributor so to that end, it will be available, but less so, which is already tricky. Combined with that to the fact that they do have extras over here, let's go through the unlocks, and they finally did put the Kickstarter exclusive tags on these, which I was wondering about. So all these unlocks over here are going to be Kickstarter exclusive. The upgraded plastic cameras for the regular cameras, the bulletproof cameras, the signal disruptors, these are just upgrading from uh, regular cardboard standees to plastic, you know, nice acrylic standees with a little miniature on top. Very interesting thing over there. I like it. Combined with the, uh, the alt sculpts and the miniatures and the skins and all that, there is going to be Kickstarter exclusive content, and they're also hinting, by the way, they're using alt sculpts from their other properties, which is interesting because over here in one of the new ones, not this one, in the most recent vote, they have an alt sculpt for something that is a upcoming property, so teasing information at us about upcoming stuff, or maybe it was this one, it might have been this one over here, uh, Legion over here might have been the alt uh, upcoming property. In any case, so that's going to be the content over here. The short version of all of this is... If you're interested in the game, I do recommend backing with the understanding that it might be available later cheaper. It might be. The combination of the exclusive you get and the combination of the unclear retail availability means this falls in the category of if you're interested in it, I think you should get it. You might lose a little bit on the value, but I don't think you're going to lose a lot. The combination of exclusives and potential low replayability, uh, low availability makes it a mostly safe back. Not a great back, to remind you, but a mostly safe one. Your, your other option is just not getting it now and hoping for either a second Kickstarter, which there may well be. I mean, R6 as a property is continuing to expand, so there may be a second Kickstarter down the road, or hoping for the retail availability. A little bit of a risk either way. Worst case scenario, you can pick it up in the second-hand market. It likely won't be... You're likely not looking at major differences either way, but it is a degree of unknown attached to this one. So not a clear answer. Apologies for that. 
I will say you don't need all the content. I'm not saying don't get all the content, but you definitely don't need all the content. The base game alone would keep you busy for a decent amount of time. So decisions, decisions, decisions. There are no easy ones today. Moving on, we have Big Game Night from AEG's premier convention experience. So AEG is going to be bringing you basically a few games. They're bringing you specifically Rolling Witchcraft 10 as well as the expansion for villagers, uh, for tiny towns called Villagers. So they're bringing you all of that and they're bringing it to you for $40 plus roughly $13 shipping. So roughly a $53 price point. Uh, villagers is a known quantity. It's going to be an expansion for a game that you may or may not already have and or may or may not already like. I don't know. Then 10 and Rolling Witchcraft are going to be two new games. 10 is going to be available. 10 is going to be a game that's more of like a typical card game where you're trying to go through a pattern of cards think of games like the game think of games like the mine think of your standard i don't know the box size in this that box size looks big but it does look like it's a lighter card play but sequencing lots of lots of games do stuff like that and then whirling witchcraft is going to be a bit of a tableau builder which you can look at the videos for more information but it looks like a tableau builder getting things you need passing around to your opponents and all that uh in terms of the prices on this game these games are all available online so it's an easy price check on these you can get this villagers for 23 dollars you can get Ruling Witchcraft for $30 or $31, you can get 10 for roughly $16, which means all told, if you back this on the Kickstarter, you're $53 on the Kickstarter, you're saving roughly $18 from retail, which means if you are interested in these three games, it's an easy back. If you're interested in Ruling Witchcraft and Villagers, it's an easy back because 10 is already free at that point. But if you're interested in if you're interested in only Ruling Witchcraft and 10, or if you're interested in only the Villagers and 10, then it starts to drift into not a good back. The price point is good here. The price point the, that you're getting on Kickstarter versus the retail availability is a good one. The problem that you're going to have in terms of resale value, should you back it, should you not, is Villagers is a known quantity. Villagers is an expansion for a good game. People are interested in that. That's great. Rolling Witchcraft and 10 are still new and untested properties. Rolling Witchcraft in particular, by the way, does seem to have a bunch of reviews. If you go to Board Game Geek, there are a bunch of reviews that seem to like it. And they're not from shill accounts. They're from people who clearly rate a lot of games. It looks like genuine reviews. I could be wrong, but it looks legit. Uh, 10, on the other hand, I have no real information on. So overall... Price point is good, does not mean resale, avail resale value is good. Some games from AEG are amazing and hold well, and others are temporary flash in the pan. I don't know where these ones lie. Instinctively, my first impression is looking at them is they do look like games that people won't be talking about in a few years, but the reviews on Rolling Witchcraft, like I said already, are very positive, so that has a little bit more hope, so we'll see how that goes. But good price if you want the games. From there, we have Nexum. Nexum Galaxy from, 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 from... Nexum Galaxy from the company's name, Eclipse Editorial. They have done a few games in their belt. I think the one they're going to be most famous for is going to be Skull Tale, uh, Skull Tale Sail Rising, something like that. What is it again? Full Sail, Full Rising. They have a game. It's like Skull Tales something. Let's see. We have Yohei Relaunch, we have Yohei, and it's Skull Tales Full Sail. That's what it was. So Skull Tales Full Sail is going to be, I think, their biggest property. It's a well rated game coming in at 8, uh, 8 point, uh, 7 point nine on Board Game Geek, I think it was. So well rated overall, but also one that hasn't really held its value. We'll touch upon that over here. Uh, this is going to be a 4X game, an interesting 4X game. I don't know what it's doing 100% differently. It has strategy, luck, and complexity, all of that. If you look at the, the movement sequences, the way the card, the game actually plays, there's going to be an expansion over here, Nexum Galaxy, the Astros expansion and we're going to be getting that at a very reasonable price at $35 for the core set which is a cheap Kickstarter. Doesn't mean it's a good back, but you know the whole Stockholm Syndrome aspect of Kickstarter is you see $35 and you're like, ooh, that's that's a great price. I should get that. Or perhaps you see Nexum Galaxy plus Asteroids and you're like, well, $54 for the expansion. That's just straight up reasonable. And alternatively, you can go for the all-in where you're going to get 120 miniatures, the near play playmat. You get the 120 miniatures anyway. You do not. So for the all-in, you get the 120 miniatures, the near play playmat, and the 100 premium sleeves. And again, only $90 for an all-in on a Kickstarter. That's just straight up tempting. As far as the game itself, this one is tricky because we have a combination of a few things. We have a low availability, 346 backers. Their games historically have not had great retail presence. They've had them occasionally on Amazon, where the price is worse than Kickstarter, not better. But in terms of regular retail, we have not seen their games in general have a wide retail availability, which puts Nexum Galaxy in the position of your options are either Kickstarter or the secondhand market, most likely. To that end, in terms of Kickstarter, the price is not terrible. The secondhand market is going to be where we bring Skull Tales to the table. Uh, Skull Tales is one that did not hold its value in the secondhand market. I would say with Nexum Galaxy, you're likely going to be able to find this on the secondhand market cheaper down the road, but with 346 copies currently being backed, that's not a large availability. So it goes into that annoying category of this is your easiest and best option to get it. 
but well, your easiest option to get it, not necessarily your best one. But if you don't back it now, if you do back it now, trust me, there'll be a copy for half the price on the Board Game Geek Marketplace down the road because that's how life works. If you don't back it now, you'll probably never be able to find one because again, that's how life works. It's it's frustrating. Pick or choose your poison. Moving on, we have Valor and Villainy Ludwig's Labyrinth. So this is an interesting one because for this one, I actually pulled up my video. I did a why I backed a video on the original Valor and Villainy. Um, Minions of Mordak. This is going to be Ludwig's Labyrinth, bringing you more content and different content and gameplay changes. Let's talk about the changes and content first, and then let's talk about my last video, what I said then, and what I'm going to say now about the should you back it, should you not. To that end, Valor and Villainy Ludwig's Labyrinth is going to be a game that the main pledge is going to be either $60 for the retail game, do not get that, do not, do not, do not, do not, do not get that, or $90 for the deluxe game, where that one is a reasonable thing to get, and then $135 for the premium bundle if you want the plastic tokens and the antagonist arsenal expansion and all of that. The antagonist arsenal expansion for the worth is going to be basically giving you stuff, ways to combine the two games, Minions and Mordak and Valor and Villainy, and of course some of these you can buy separately as well if you don't want to bundle them. Uh, the gameplay itself is going to be taking the basic gameplay of of, of Minions of Mordak, and then trying to do a few different things with it. First of all, they are introducing a cooperative mode to the game, so it's no longer just one versus all, it is now a cooperative mode as well. Secondly, they are adding a ton more cards. In fact, I want to show you the graphic here, because it's just a pretty graphic. These are going to be the two games side by side, and the reason they're doing that is because the price point of the original Valor and Villainy was $60 for the deluxe version, and Min uh, Ludwig's Labyrinth is $90 for the deluxe version, so that's a whole lot more content. Why is it going to be that much more? Well, first of all, you have five villains instead of one villain. That's a big difference right there. You also have 600 plus cards instead of 230 cards. That's a huge difference, and one of the things I like about this one, and then past that, look at all these little boxes off all the content because it's going to have like scenarios and the kind of legacy light or campaign-driven ga gameplay. So there's more content, and then of course the rising costs in general in the world, rising MSRPs, freight costs, all those things, paper, all that stuff is going to increase the MSRP as well. So they're charging you $30 more for the game, but they're giving you more content while factoring in those higher costs as well. That's going to be the gameplay there. Going back to the changes, so like I said already, it's giving you cooperative gameplay instead of just one versus many. You still can do one versus many. It's going to be giving you a bunch of different bosses to fight across these multiple scenarios or campaign or whatever it is. It's going to be giving you a ton more cards in terms of the gameplay changes. So you no longer just have magic cards. You also have cards to to augment your, your ranged attacks and your melee attacks, making them not necessarily better, but just more fun. Part of the fun of the game was going to be having all these cards that break things and giving you more cards that break your melee and your range is just more fun. I, I tell you that because I put I played the game and it's it's more fun. So that's going to be giving you all of that. Plus, their main boss is going to be more uh, Lud Ludwig's going to have all kinds of detachable arms and stuff. Assuming you get the deluxe version with the miniatures. Speaking of which, the deluxe version is going to be coming with a game tray. It's going to be coming with extra miniatures. I don't know what else it's coming with. It's coming primarily, I think, game trays and miniatures. That was the original did. I assume it's the same one over here. Uh, so you're going to be paying basically the extra thirty dollars for those things, for the game trays and miniatures, which is not crazy considering a min an insert alone can cost thirty dollars. Which brings us to the should you back it, should you not. So I pulled up my original video for why I backed Valor and Villainy to take a look. And I was mostly right, but partially wrong in that one. In that video for, and it's again, different game, but I'm just giving you some context. So it's a good, it's a good use case of being able to look at something I said and seeing how it applied to the market. And then extrapolating that towards this one to see, well, how do we move forward with the new information? So in the original video, I said that I believe it'll mostly hold its value. Maybe you'll lose on shipping to that. And I was right. The $60 pledge for Valor and Villainy. And I also said, sell it early if you want to maximize your return. Uh, so for Val and Villainy, basically, if you look at the marketplace sales, people who sold it right away in the first few months got more than what they paid for their pledge for the most part. People who sold it later are getting in the range of, I think I saw like one price, one person sold it below the 60, but for the most part, you're looking at like around 55 to 70 for people who sold it later. So like I said, mostly hold its value. Losing a bit on shipping is what the main pledge did. And if you sold it earlier, you got your full value. The part that I was mainly wrong about is I said the original retail costs, even that sounded good. That's where I was a little wrong because Val and Villainy went to basically retail for 35 bucks or $33, whatever it is, if you go on miniature market. And that's the nature of online discounting. It's not fun. No creator likes it, but it's part of the realistic decisions we have to make as consumers, as backers in terms of getting the game. So I over, I thought retail was a better pledge on the Kickstarter than it was. Although I definitely pushed people towards the deluxe pledge, which is the better value realistically. So extrapolating all that to here, it's going to be mostly the same stuff. Just taking that into account. That retail pledge of $60, I think is not the way to go. 
I think this will unfortunately be cheaper in retail. Once you factor in the shipping cost and the $60 price point, I do not think the standee version, no game trays version of this game will be $60 in retail. I think it will be cheaper, which means I think the retail option is not the way to go unless you're just counting on the fact that maybe it never makes its way to retail. I think it will. Personally, I could be wrong. Past that, the $90, $90 Deluxe Pledge, like I said already, $30 extra for a bunch of miniatures with detachable arms, with giving you uh, the game trays as well. I think that's the easy way to go. Judging by Valor and Villainy, the original, I think the same thing likely holds true. This is one where if you sell it initially, you'll probably get what you paid and then some back. If you're patient and you hold off and you're playing it and you want to sell it, you know, six months down the road, you'll probably get roughly what you paid, maybe a little less. This property in general is well rated, but doesn't have a huge fan base. So that kind of results in... You know, it's rated on Board Game Week like an 8.0 or an 8.1, but there's not a huge amount of people rating it. So it falls into that zone of people want it, but a small subset, select group of people want this game. And that's going to be Valor and Villainy Ludwig's Labyrinth. Moving on. Moving on, we have First Ascent. First Ascent, going to be first time creator over here, coming to you from someone who is both a rock climber and a board gamer, combining those two, and not only combining those two, but illustrating the game themselves as well. Uh, first Ascent is going to be a $49 game. You can see up there, the price tag over there, $49 plus shipping, and it's going to basically be giving you a rock climbing, climbing game. You pick a climber, you're going to augment their, their abilities, you're going to like level up a little bit of tableau building in that sense, as you slowly make your way to the summit over there. Uh, this one's a tricky one just because it is it does fall into the category of it's a fairly expensive, not expensive expensive but it's $49 for a basic game where very often unless there's extras or something along with it then a base game on retail is usually in the $35 to $45 range the $49 plus shipping over here just puts it at a little bit out of range and this one may make its way to retail which brings us to the maybe part of things which is currently we have 696 backers which means this is popular enough that we might see it in retail if we do see it in retail, I think the price point will be cheaper. I know they've said on the campaign the price point is the cheapest one you'll see here. Usually people are saying that in reference to the MSRP. I don't see this one as being $49 at retail. I don't see it surviving with the components to the price point. I could be wrong, but I don't see it surviving at retail at $49 and you're playing $49 plus shipping. So I think it's an, it's go falls in that category again of, I don't think it's the worst back in terms of if you want the game, lock in your option to get it now. It has a very specific audience as well, which makes it trickier. When games lean into a very unique theme and they execute on it well, if you look at the reviews, the feedback, the testimonials, it seems this is anything but a pasted on theme. This really gives you the rock climbing experience, at least if you know and appreciate rock climbing. So that also means that if you don't appreciate rock climbing, it may not, it may just feel like a theme and it may interest you, may not. So I think there's going to be a slightly lower audience for this one. They did do a good job executing it. I recommend watching before you play his gameplay to see how it plays, see if it interests you. This is not the first climbing game we've seen, but this one may well be one of the better implemented in terms of the mechanisms of, of theme to gameplay, uh, mechanics to theme and all that in terms of the game. So it falls in the category. I don't think it's a great back. I don't think you're getting your $49 back if you try to sell it down the road. And I think it will be available cheaper at retail if it makes its way to retail. Moving on, we have Alien Pet Shop. Alien Pet Shop, a cute and mildly dangerous pet for your... A Gather cute and mildly dangerous pets for your Alien Pet Shop. Manage your dice workers and chaos in this light engine builder. This is, like it says already, a light engine builder. This is a game where you're going to be rolling dice and assigning them to try to... You're going to be... Your dice are effectively your workers. You're going to try and be, gather more dice. You're going to try to gather various alien pets, putting them in different, different habitats. You'll be buying different habitat cards to augment your habitats, getting extra return, extra money, less maintenance, less management, all of that. And when you roll your dice, you're trying to figure out how to assign them based on what's rolled, how much energy you're your workers have that round however you want to do it all that with unique player boards while striving for specific goals as well getting the most of a certain type of pet so it does a solid job in terms of being a light engine builder but the key words are it's a light engine builder uh, this one's going to have one pledge level pretty simple well one assuming you just want the basic game it's going to be 39 dollars for the main game of the game plus all unlock stretch goals this one, for like the third time today, is going to fall into that category of, I don't think you're getting your money back on this one if you decide to sell it down the road, but the low audience, the 219 people, means your options for getting this are either on Kickstarter or hoping for the secondhand market with a low amount of people actually selling this on the secondhand market just because it's not a very popular game, at least not yet. So overall, not a good value, may be your best opportunity to get it. Again, this is like the third time we're saying it today. It may not be the last. I don't know what else is coming, so may not be the last. We'll see. But alien and pet shop on Kickstarter. From there, we have Coalitions from Phalanx Games. The Phalanx? Phalanx Games, right? Phalanx. I'm pretty sure it's Phalanx. So, uh, Coalitions is going to be the newest game from Phalanx Games. Their last game was Dominations, I want to say. But they have a bunch of games on Kickstarter. They had Rocket Man before, the Rocket Men before that. They've had a bunch of games. They are a good company with a good track record. Lots of games under the belt. Coalitions is going to be a game where you and, uh, and allies, you know, team up together to try to take down Napoleon and maybe be in its play, be in its place and rule the world or all that, or rule Europe at least something. You know, you can always rule something. Uh, this 
this is a game that's going to have a bunch of deluxe components, some Kickstarter exclusive components, and a MSRP difference that, if that MSRP difference is anything to go by, this might be a good back, but I'm not 100% confident. So let's let's explain some of that. So the core pledge over here is going to be 42 euro, 42 pounds, $59, based on an MSRP of $107, which would make that a good back, even with the shipping cost taken into account. Additionally, you'll be getting the diplomacy miniatures, which are Kickstarter exclusives. So that's great. You're getting some Kickstarter exclusive content that you will not otherwise get at retail. Those are going to be the little talking busts, or not talking, the little busts of the various characters over there, as opposed to using these tokens or whatever it is. So you have that in terms of the Kickstarter exclusive, plus all unlock bonuses. Then for the Deluxe Pledge, you can spend $97 discounted from $179 MSRP, which is going to give you the Deluxe Miniature Set, the Fortress Expansion, and all unlock bonus. Deluxe Miniature Set is going to be a whole bunch of miniatures. Let's go ahead and scroll down now. And the Ancient Regime Expansion is thrown in for free as backers as well. By the way, you can see that over here. This is free for backers, but it is taken into account in the MSRP differences. So they're taking all that into account. So if we scroll down further, we can see we have the, the, the Deluxe Fortress Expansion. We have the Ancient Regime. We have the Fortress Expansion. All that stuff for backers. And again, free just means taken into account when you factor in the price of pledge levels. Uh, it's going to be a game where you're basically taking action every round. You can you can you muster, you can tax, you can command, mobilize, uh, influence, or move, and all that in terms of uh, could cause uh, engage in battles. Basic kind of not basic. It's just it's a standard dudes on a map game with various actions and economy to drive the engine forward, but with an element of, of teaming up and alliances that are making potentially stand out. The game is available on Tabletop Simulator if you want to check out that, as well as a rule book as well. As far as the pledge breakdowns, I want to see the pledge breakdowns. There's a thing. First of all, I'll show you the minute. Miniature set. So the miniature set is over here. You can see the miniatures. They overall look fine. I don't think they stand out as being amazing, but they do look they look pretty decent. We'll see. Obviously, these are renders, so we'll see what the final copies look like. We have the Kickstarter, you know, the, the Fortress expansion, the bus, which are exclusive, and then there's daily bonuses. So they're giving you daily bonuses as well. Where are the daily bonuses? Where are the daily bonuses? They're doing, I don't know where they're doing it. They're doing some degree of stretch goals. So they hit 60,000 pounds back, so they gave you a dollar discount on shipping. It's interesting. They're giving you straight up money back on shipping the higher it funds. At the $1 discount back, one pound discount is not going to be that impactful. If this actually goes higher and higher, and it's only talking about a seven pound discount well that's some somehow that not somehow that suddenly matters a lot more one pound i don't think is changing anyone's mind you could have just changed the price by one pound uh, but yeah that's going to be the game over here and you can see over here you can see all the list of msrps as well as the giant mat card holders all the extra stuff you're getting metal coins all that stuff for the game and then shipping. Shipping is not necessarily unreasonable, depending on what you're getting, but looking at £12 for the game and all the stuff you're getting, it's not bad. So going back to this, their games, uh, Phalanx Games in general, have had a mixed bag of games in terms of their uh, price on Kickstarter to their value after Kickstarter, and the value both being what's available in retail, as well as the secondhand market. As far as what's available in retail, assuming these MSRPs stick at all, this is a very good back. As far as the secondhand market, their games mostly have done a decent job holding their value, but they have a smaller audience, and it's not a huge audience. It is not a bad, it's not a huge audience, it's not a small audience, it's a middle audience. I think this is a fairly safe back, but I'm a little bit uncertain just because they have had mixed bags in terms of the, the demand for various games they've had. They've had games like Rocketman, which has had a good demand, people are trying to get their hands in that, but they've had other games that were not as popular. I think this is overall a safe back. I would recommend Kickstarter as the best place to get this if you're interested in this game, but it is with a little bit of doubt in my mind just because, like I said, they have had good and they've had better and worse backs as far as Kickstarter. Moving on to four. Force of Pangaea, or is it Pangaea? I have no idea how to say that. Is that Pangaea? I don't know. The forest game with the trees. Photosynthesis on, on, on wooden trees and stuff. Whatever it is. 3,500 backers. $224,000 raised. This one, we're making good time today. We only have like four left after this. I think I'm just talking fast as usual. Let me take a breather for a second. Give me a second here. 3,500 backers, 18 days to go, $224,000 raised. This is uh, this is doing fairly well, as you might imagine. Uh, part of what's tricky in this one is they imply that it's, they both simultaneously imply that it's Kickstarter only and imply that there's a retail option of the game. I tried going through the comments. I tried going through the FAQ. I tried finding a confirmed answer. I could not find one. Keep in mind, there are 849 comments. It's entirely possible I missed the confirmed answer. So if you know, feel free to comment. But effectively, if you scroll down before we cover the game itself, if you scroll down to the section down here, the world, the art, somewhere, 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 they have a section over here. Why back now? Where's the why back now? I want the why back now section. I like the why back now section. They're always much more fun. Why back now? Why back now? I'm just scrolling through it, and I can't find Why back now? Here we go. So, this game will be only available on Kickstarter. That's pretty specific, right? This game will be only available on Kickstarter, and yet they have things such as, you know, Kickstarter exclusive over here for the premium edition, and then not Kickstarter exclusive for the standard edition. 
that's what I call mixed messages. Hopefully this was clarified somewhere, but I couldn't find where it was clarified. I've been through the updates, I've been through the FAQ, and I've been through a bunch of comments. I could not find a clarification on whether it's Kickstarter exclusive or not. They seem to imply that it's only on Kickstarter, and they seem to imply that it's not only on Kickstarter. That has me confused, and also makes it a bit uncertain as to what to do. But scrolling past that, this is going to be a game similar to photosynthesis. It's a game of planting trees. You're doing that to basically accomplish your various goals. You're going to be given these, uh, what are they called? They're not, they're not called goals. They're called called they are called rituals you're going to be trying to accomplish various rituals as you plant seeds grow trees you have these beautiful tokens that lay on top of the trees you can see over here look at that look look at the tree growing it doesn't actually do that on the table it just looks cool so overall this one looks like and, and if you look at the reviews this one looks like it's going to be a family game to midweight category so like photosynthesis i really think that is an apt comparison as far as both thematically and uh, weight class as far as where this game lies this is going to be bringing you different gameplay, though. But again, similar theme, similar weight class, different gameplay, past the growing trees, and and being a mid mid to lighter weight game. Uh, the game looks gorgeous. It has you have your spirits of the forest, so we'll be moving around the board. You have your trees that you'll be building and then growing further. You have the various tiles and the seeds and the resource tokens. And then for six dollars more, the base pledge is going to be fifty five uh, forty nine fifty five dollars basically. Sorry, fifty nine dollars. The base pledge is going to be $59, and for an extra $7, basically, you're going to get the premium edition, where all these 80 tokens, these, the resources and life tokens, will be upgraded to wood bits, which you can see over here. So these are going to be upgraded to wood bits instead, which I think for $7, I mean, it's one of those, again, Stockholm Syndrome stuff, like anything these days on Kickstarter is like, well, only $7. I mean, a deluxe pledge is usually $30 more, so this is a great deal. Uh, it ultimately does depend on the actual tokens themselves and the thickness and the gauge. Usually 80 upgraded wood tokens, $7, that's a great deal. Looking at these over here, I'm not not confident in terms of the thickness and the level of extra heft they give they might be good might not be but i'd still say for the eight dollars go ahead or seven dollars go ahead and upgrade and get them even if they're not that quality it's a pretty decent price for 80 extra bits uh, that's going to be that as far as should you back it or not and by the way all pledges include that so you're good there uh but past that should you back it should you not they're still unlocking stretch goals still giving you more stuff box upgrade custom art new tiles there was another one the dual layer boards that was a big one i like dual layer boards that's also going to be the premium edition over there so another difference with the premium edition and the standard edition pay attention to the stretch goals as well as what's unlocked there you have custom seeds a solo mode game gen. So this is an interesting one so they have this in the updates people asked for a solo mode and they're like well we could do a solo mode it seems like it should work but we also don't know one so the way they're handling that is they're having a game jam where people can submit their draft version of a solo mode which is an interesting approach because i like the fact that it, i mean it is tacked on very much attacked on this is not a planned solo mode this is like a i guess we can do that solo mode but at least the way they're handling it is not trying to just design it themselves and just make it fit. They're trying to really pick and find the best way to implement this game as a solo mode. Understand if you're back in this game because of the solo mode, it's not completely there yet. So it is definitely a risk on that sense. I mean, the whole thing's a risk. It's always a risk. You never know how good a game will be, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, as far as should you back it, should you not? kind of depends on the Kickstarter exclusive nature of the game. Uh, if it's Kickstarter exclusive, I mean, the, the, the double layer player boards and the wooden extra bits, those will help for the premium edition, and that's like marked Kickstarter exclusive. So the, the whole campaign says Kickstarter only, but that's doubly marked Kickstarter, Kickstarter exclusive. I imagine the premium edition at the very least is Kickstarter exclusive. That said, the, if the base game is giving you everything except for the dual layer boards and except for the premium tokens, it still will hurt the overall should you back it, should you not. I would say if this is Kickstarter exclusive, it's probably a safer back. There's enough of an audience in terms of, I mean, we have three and a half thousand backers. The game looks gorgeous. The game looks pretty. It has a theme like photosynthesis. The flip side is it's twice the price of photosynthesis because I mean, photosynthesis doesn't have wooden components. So it does fall into this interesting area of if the game is a solid, good game, then great. I, I don't love the fact that if you look at testimonials, if you look at the testimonials, if you find them somewhere here, I don't love the fact that most of the testimonials focus on how pretty the game is. I don't like in general, and this is a big thing. And I would say if I ever, if I ever do a testimonial for a game and I just comment on how pretty the game looks and that's it, then it means one of two things. It means, well, no, it means one thing because I will not give a testimonial that only ever comments on the game looking beautiful. If it, that ever happens, it means someone took a quote out of a video where I didn't intend for that to be the main testimonial. So I, in general, when, the, the, here's the problem. It's a good thing when a game looks pretty. It is. It is genuinely a good thing when a game looks pretty. The problem is everyone on Kickstarter can see that. If you're looking at the testimonials, you as the backer can already make the decision as to whether the game is beautiful or not. You don't need someone else to tell you this game is beautiful. You see that. What you need testimonials for is the idea that there are going to be people who don't know if the game, the people who are back in the game don't know if the game is good. So when someone says something like, you know, let's see this one over here. We have a beautiful and strategic board game. Great. You threw something else in there. We have this game looks beautiful and we have had so much joy in expanding our mini forest with our 
it doesn't I mean they had joy in it so they had joy that's good it sounds like they're saying they enjoyed it something if you look at the various options this one's an informative one I like this one a lot a delicious looking game somewhere between family and midway this told me where the game lies but I want to hear that the game I want to hear things about the game that I can't know as a backer as someone on the page uh, the game looks beautiful that's great I can tell you it looks beautiful or not I can agree or not but I don't need a testimonial for that I will make up that decision on my own I do not need someone else to say it looks beautiful I see that. So I want testimonials in general to give some degree of information that is not immediately present to backers. Granted, it's still just an opinion. And and very often it's also part of a paid preview. So it's even more of an opinion-ish. I, I get that. But it's still something as opposed to just saying the game looks beautiful doesn't help me at all. It either does or doesn't. That said, so that's a little bit of a tangent there. That said, I I think the game is good. I don't know the game is good. But if you look, there is a gameplay video you can watch. Overall, I think this is a decently safe back. And at the price point that there is, you're probably not losing a lot, even if I'm wrong. But it really does come down to that Kickstarter exclusive aspect. I don't know if it's Kickstarter exclusive. And if it isn't, that very much changes just how good a back it is or isn't. Moving on to Scarface 1920. Scarface 1920, a game that just yesterday I did a full should you back it or not. The short version of this game is 4,300 backers, 584,000. We're still not crossing that line yet. It's been a, it's been a slow few days trying to cross that 500,000 euro over there because then you get like an enforcer and we'll unlock more enforcers and stuff will happen. I, I think this campaign will end in the 800 to 900,000 dollar range. But it's been a currently a slow slog at the moment. We might need some more stuff to get there. That said, Scarface 1920 effectively is going to be a deck building, worker placement, area control game. It's going to and it's light in all those categories. It's light area control, it's light deck building, and it's light worker placement. It has aspects of all of them tied together in a game that is, well, a lot of fun. I have a I will have a gameplay on this up tomorrow, and I will have a review up on Saturday. And if you can't wait that long, well then there's a should you back it yesterday and a gameplay currently on Crackle's channel. All those things are available for this game. But I have played this game, I have really enjoyed this game. This is a solid game lots of fun i have critiques pay attention for the review on saturday for that but overall really enjoyed it as far as the should you back it should you not i mean i'm not going to a full deep dive on the gameplay i did that in yesterday's video if you want like a seven minute like talk through of exactly how the game works i do that in yesterday's video but past the basic overview of the mob gameplay what you have enforcers and thugs or whatever it is and you're sending those out to the board and you're slowly building a deck and you're being mindful of your of the feds tracking you and your heat level or whatever you want to call it being mindful of all that all while trying to get the most money and accomplish jobs jobs that are a lot of fun so now i'm starting to tell you what the game plays again but yeah that's basically the overall game as far as should you back it should you not the short version here is this game is expensive it is not cheap the base pledge once you factor in shipping coming in at 120 dollars for the base pledge and combined with the 30 dollars shipping it's gonna be 150 dollars to get the game at the minimum that is not a cheap offering this reminds me of of primal when they had like a 200 dollar basically was the lowest you could actually pay to get the game and that came with like giant monster miniatures which people are frankly more used to paying for uh, versus paying for a bunch of monster miniatures isn't as palatable especially when you have things like the godfather corleone's empire which ended up as a barnes and noble discount for like 10 bucks so you, people are finding that thing at like macy's or i don't know we're not macy's well what's the stores tj maxx and that whole series of stores people are finding godfather for like 10 bucks for a bunch of good miniatures so i think that hurts the general value perception around uh, specifically a very obvious competitor in terms of the mobster space with miniatures with gameplay well gameplay every game has gameplay but yeah so i think that might have hurt the value aspect over here although again not cheap 150 dollars is not cheap that said as far as extras exclusives all of that the game the big game is going to be giving you a few things it's going to be giving you currently and it's still growing but it's going to be giving you as exclusive unique buildings for every mob otherwise in the retail version there's all standard it's going to be giving you that paperboy if you backed him or you could if you got in the first two days you got the paperboy for free or if you buy it after that's going to be exclusive and then it's going to be giving you a bunch of cards and a ring let's see if we can find the ring the ring is going to be a replacement for a token you have in the game if i can find it over here and then it's going to be giving you let's find the ring first here you go here's the ring over over here you'll be getting it like this you can paint it or do whatever you want with it but uh, past that is going to be giving you a bunch of exclusive cards so exclusive jobs exclusive dealers exclusive news all of that and i said this in my yesterday's video but the news and the jobs are, i think are very cool more news and jobs are awesome i want as many as i can get those are incredibly impactful to the game the dealers not so much i don't actually care at all about having four new dealers they're all just some variation of i store x goods i cost this and i give you that it's literally just three numbers every single dealer now if you give them a bill if you make them interesting if you make them different then i'm more interested right now it's just a few numbers so four more on top of what we have doesn't matter again kickstarter is still going so you can expect to see more stuff as the campaign continues to progress as the funding level hopefully continues to rise although 
keep in mind the enforcers over here might take up a decent chunk of the remaining funding in terms of before we see more stuff i don't know i'm optimistic i want to see more things short version of should you back it should you not is there's a big gap in price point between getting this game on Kickstarter versus getting it in retail. That that gap, I think for most people, is probably not worth it. I think for most people, that gap of paying an extra $40, $50 in order to get a bunch of exclusive stuff that is not essential but just adds some degree of value, I think for most people, get it at retail. That said, if you're someone like myself who, well, in my case, I played it, but if you're someone else who's incredibly interested, incredibly invested in this, then know that it is a good game, and if you're willing to pay it, it's nice to get that stuff and also the fact thing you do want to factor in is the extras and like the optional buys those are gonna be harder to track down and get at retail if you want to get on kickstarter it will be easier to do so there so not an easy decision paying a lot more for a premium component premium version of the game as far as will it hold this value i'm not sure i'm not sure i think that this is a good game that will be received well and i think people will want those extras but it's a big gap for a small amount of extras so i think it will but also just not confident there moving on and by the way, this opinion might change. Pay attention to future two back or not two backs because as they unlock more stuff, it's possible it'll change. The more they unlock, the better of a back this turns into. If they're saving their things to the last minute, like like The Witcher was in terms of all the stuff at the last day, then yeah, this could definitely be a better back. So we'll see how that goes. Moving on, we have The Great Race 2. Only two left, not bad. The Great Race 2 is going to be bringing you, well, The Great Race 2. This is going to be a game where you're traveling across the board and trying to accomplish these dangerous feats and journeys with your adventuring team and all that. Don't know a lot of the gameplay, to be frank. This does seem to be, this is a sequel to The Great Race, so The Great Race was a limited supply game, did not have a ton of availability, so they're reprinting on Kickstarter, giving you the new version, plus you can buy the original version as well. Uh, this is going to be, well, fairly expensive, but coming in at $91 for the pledge. For The Great Race 1 is $91, and the pledge adventure of the core box, The Great Race 2 is $91 as well. Sorry, over here, 92 The Great Race 2. Uh, you can get all of that over there. Uh, overall, as far as will it hold its value, will it not? We don't have a lot of information to go on because the only information we really have to go on is the Great Race itself. The Great Race itself, if you look in the second-hand market, does seem to be doing fine. Not amazing. I think you get most of your money back, but it's, it's one of those games that has a... It's an expensive game with a, a bunch of people who want it, but not a ton of availability, which has mostly made a hold its value. So I think that if you're interested in this game, again, same idea. You can you can try to get the Great Race 1 instead if you just want that. If you specifically want the Great Race 2, the Kickstarter may be your best opportunity to get it because of the low availability. We currently have, what do we have? We have 426 backers, and that's with a relaunch. So it's not a high availability. It might be a best chance to get it. Think of this as like the Ticket to Ride of, you know, we have different versions of Ticket to Ride, Ticket to Ride Europe, although this is a very different game, obviously. I'm just bringing the general genre or uh what's it called uh, abstract uh, whatever words some um, things but the great race 2 is bringing you more gameplay very expensive but mostly holding its value You'll lose on shipping but that seems to be about it moving on and lastly we have battlefish the card game battlefish the game is going to be a game where it's basically this from tyler smith for created although really we have two prior battlefishes that didn't really fund and then we have the um a sticker set that did so it's just really the first board game it looks like that we're dealing with and battlefish is a game first of all i do love the humor by the way you can watch the video for see how things play i'll just give you a good overview there uh but there are a few other videos that had good i don't remember what they were there are a few other videos rochambeau had a great video i don't remember either way but battlefish battlefish is going to be a game where you basically set your your ranks you're going to have these player boards let's see if we can find them here you go here are the player boards you're setting your ranks and then people are going to be assaulting them revealing cards and then either uh further strong uh, further in both uh, further entrenching your strongholds if they lose or alternatively making the way to the base if they don't so you're playing this card game it's mostly a card game of some degree of bluffing some degree of card play all based on numbers and i again i love the humor of the page things like why battlefish well if you spent your whole life knowing you'd be fried and deep batter then you'd also be battling it's cute it's funny it's amusing uh, it's gonna be art by the mitchell which is great but overall this one is going to be coming in at 25 dollars for the early bird 30 dollars for most copies over there uh, this one is going to fall into the same category as the fourth time today for one that overall i think this is going to be with 200 backers there's not a lot of opportunities to get this game but i also do not think it will hold its value i'm not going to overly go into detail because i've said it four times today same message applies and that is basically a wrap thanks so much for being here as always, until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co., and I'll see you next week. Have a good one. Speaking of next week, by the way, next week we have a fun week coming up. Not, I mean, I think we have a decent amount of stuff, so let's, let's go over what we have next week, okay? 
here's the next week so far. We have Villager Shifting Seasons. We have Game of the Year is coming next week. Oh, those are nice. Those are solid. Oh, I have two copies of Villager Shifting Seasons. I should probably delete that. Okay. We have Velocity Vanguard. That's a game that I really enjoyed. I'll have coverage of that one. That was a failed Kickstarter. Finally coming back. I hope they succeed. I really want the game. Also, I hope they succeed for them more than me. I have plenty of games. We have Wild Descent Levon Rising. We're going to talk about it in a second. We have the Zoro Dice Game Allies, although I'm not sure if that's still next week because I'm not seeing that. It may have been pushed off. I don't know. We have Hollywood Racers. We have Millennium Wars Battle Peak. We have Platformer going to be on GameFound. So we have at least two GameFound games. Between Platformer and between um, Wild Descent, we have two games on GameFound. Uh, Distilled is going to be the week after, so you have some time there. But some solid games coming next week. We'll see how that goes. And speaking of which, let's go ahead and look at Wild Descent. Now, I actually made a mistake here, by the way. So I will have, uh, this is going to be launching in like tomorrow, I guess. Yeah, you're tomorrow. So this game is going to be launching tomorrow. And they have a ton of stuff here. I'm going to go over their pre-campaign update because it's a big deal as well. So pre-campaign update for the Wild Ascent. They're going to have a core pledge. That's going to be your core pledge of Wild Ascent in two boxes, seemingly. Uh, we're going to have the Silver Stream pledge in four boxes, again, seemingly, which is different because the original pledge... The whole Silver Stream Pledge last time fit in two boxes. This is giving you a lot more stuff. I'm curious if it's actually going to be four boxes. We'll see. We have the Levon Rising Pledge. If you're not intimidated by this, you should be intimidated by this. So this is going to give you all the Levon Rising content in three new boxes on top of the prior four boxes. And that's going to be a $369 all-in. Now, the downside, and this is actually relevant to the review, because in my review, I basically said, hey... I like Levon Rising a lot. I like Wild Ascent a lot. I think Levon Rising is mostly just a better version, a uh, more iterated version of Wild Ascent. And so I recommend it if you're being budget conscious, just get Levon Rising. That's the review I'm going to have up Tuesday. That is also wrong because you can't get Levon Rising on its own unless you're someone who backed the original. If you back the original and you have Wild Ascent, you can get Levon Rising on its own. But in this Game Found Pledge, you can't just get Levon Rising on its own. It needs Wild Ascent to go with it. It uses Wild Ascent core components, so it is an expansion. It's not a standalone game, which I got horrifically wrong. Uh, past that, I will be talking about this more because I did a review already. There's going to be a gameplay on Quackloaf's channel. And then we're going to have, I'm going to have a Should You Back It on Wednesday covering Should You Back This Game and going through all that. It's going to have some gorgeous miniatures, lots of content, lots of things. I'm really just talking about it today to tell you that in ahead of time, if or when you see the review, uh, yeah, I was wrong. And I apologize because I, I basically said just get Levon Rising when you can't. And that's that. That's that. Past that, you stuck around through the end credits. I don't need to do a secret end credits past that. I, I, I don't need to do another secret end credits. Uh, past that, uh, make sure to stay tuned. If you are a patron, make sure to stay tuned for the I will have today, of course, the whole unfair and unbalanced where I tell you not to back all of these games and why. Granted, most of them already are easy enough to see, so maybe you don't need to be a patron because maybe that's not worth it. Although it's worth it to me because, because yeah, it helps. Yeah, five dollar pleasure above gives you every week when I do the two back or not to back, I go through a series called Unfair and Unbalanced where I tell you all the reasons not to back games. Oh my gosh, I am the worst, absolutely the worst again. Okay, well, timestamp it at least. Okay, back to the timestamp. I'm glad you made it here from the timestamp. My value pick of the week. Oh my gosh, I'm the worst. Okay, so here's the deal. So my value pick of the week is likely going to be Six Siege. It's hard to say for sure. None, Nothing on this week's pledge, nothing on this week's list is a great value pick of the week, unfortunately. So value pick of the week is going to be a Six Siege. It's the closest thing I have. It's not a bad value. It's not a good value. It does depend on what else they unlock as well as the retail availability down the road. But I think it's the closest thing I have to a value pick of the week for Six Siege. As far as my personal pick of the week and most interested in, it's going to be Scarface 1920. Both Six Siege and Scarface 1920, I gave a 4 to 5. Spoiler to my review, I guess. Oh well. But both Scarface, both of them are 4 to 5 to me. But Scarface 1920, I think, will hit the table more for me. Two-player games have a harder time hitting the table. So my highest interest here is going to be Scarface 1920. Really enjoyed it. Have come complaints. Watch the review. But very interested in this in terms of my gameplay pick of the week is going to be Scarface 1920. And value pick is Six Siege. Although, again, not saying it's a great value. It seems like a good value. And that's it basically it. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Thanks so much for being here. And as always, have a good one.